Good morning, Floss Tubes. Lisa here at Shady Tree Stitches, joining you for a slightly belated Floss Tube video. I apologize for that, but if you want to hear about my cross stitching journeys for the last week or so, then please stick around and hopefully you will like what you see. I've had a pretty good week cross stitching wise, a bit of a up and down week personally, but as we know, we're here to talk about the cross stitching. So I apologize for it being late, but um, there were things that I had to attend to that um, got in the way. So as you can see, I'm in my lounge room. I'm actually filming in here today because of one of the things I'll get to later. And I have rearranged my stitchy spot. So I have a beautiful bright natural light coming in behind me now here. And my computer and everything sits in front of me there. And you can see that I have cat stand and trees and the back door. So it's really nice, beautiful. So I can still see the whole room, but I can get my stitching done. All right, well, I believe I last saw you guys on Friday the 17th of September and it is now Wednesday the 29th of September so I am sorry about that. What have I stitched on? Well for starters I went fairly monogamous. I was working on a piece that I hadn't done for a while. I don't remember what prompts it was for but I got working on my Strawberry Fields by Blackbird Designs. And I was loving stitching on this. So I'm going to give you the before and after shot at the end, like usual. I'm going to tell you I'm going to do that because I'm pretty bad at remembering to tell you that that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to announce it each time. It will just appear after my stitching. But check out where I'm up to now. I have done the whole bottom, the house was already done and then I've started on that big plant. So I've only got the top strawberry border and a couple of those motifs to go. So this one I think is going to be worming its way into my knock it over, which is very exciting. I did, I worked on that for three days straight and I did probably 1800 stitches on it, which was really cool. So that's why it's got so much done on it okay I also worked a little bit on my amazing animal kingdom bookshelf and I did 765 stitches down on the zebra and I know this was for a prompt somewhere to do with the zebra so I thought well why not stitch I think we had to stitch in the colors of the zebra but I stitched on the bit around the zebra in the browns and the blacks so it's really filling that in quite a bit. Um, so yeah, shelf, shelf two is starting to take shape. So I think my goal is to move shelf two along to about here, fill that in, and then I may go down to shelf three and do the same thing and just keep filling out from the left. So really enjoying this, looking forward to getting some more stitching on my Amazing Animal Kingdom when it comes up next. I then also had, because I had to finish off my zombie run. So I was working on my number sampler, guys. My oldest whip is finished. And it is, girls. And it is, the entire oldest oldest number sampler. As far as I can tell, it's out of print. So cute. Really glad to have it done. And I'm going to pop it into the um, Shady Trees Retreat House because it's all beach-like. So very pleased with that. Unfortunately, you don't get a fanfare today. But more about that later. Sorry about that. It was worthy of a big fanfare. I was preparing for a really big fanfare. So I worked on that for three days to finish it and I did about two and a half thousand stitches to, to knock him out of the park. So it's been knock it over for anyone doing knock it over, you can start now. There's nothing that says you have to wait till October. Knock those pieces out of the park. I had to do a challenge for um, Amazing Race to do a stitching on a piece with a horse. So Old Time Wagons, Charles Waisaki from Dimensions, was the piece that I plucked out of the stash. And I did just the 200 stitches that it needed on it. 
had to be in a particular color, so white and black. So you can see the starting of that white and black carriage. So that was the 200 stitches I did on my old time wagons. Uh, probably won't be a knock it over, but it, it can stay in the, in the get it done pile. I then also had to pull out for the sunflower prompt, the Brooks Books Cakes, which looks like this. Check out those sunflowers and how cool is it that the cake I was actually working on is the one with sunflowers. So I got a lot of work done, 539 stitches on that cake. I didn't get to actual sunflower, but I got the sunflower leaves done. So I was stitching this, I'll be honest. I make mistakes too. My plan was to stitch this on one piece of fabric, the whole pattern. But I realized that where I laid it out, it's going to be too short. I should have done it this direction to make them fit to have the three rows. So I'm going to have to do them as um, to form up the panels and I'm going to have to use a, a complementary fabric for the last four. So we'll worry about that when we get there. I also worked on my spring house trio. I enjoyed working on this one too. Didn't want to stop so there's the spring house trio and I have got it to a good level that it's definitely in the knock it overs. 426 stitches for the spring house trio which is there so I was working on this grey and white house over here and these ones I'm also doing in panels for each season which is good so probably the rest of this fabric will be the one I'll move down to the cakes because it matches it pretty well it's by the same dyer crafty leaning so it would be a good match it's the same size I'll have to check that then I also had to do some work on my Anzac which is more than about halfway done now so I worked on this part down here with the whale tail the bird so now I'm going to start filling in this and get New Zealand happening which will be good so so it's all my knocked over plans but it won't be done in October I know that. And then I had three other finishes. They're little ones. And these are part of my series for uh, little mo positivity, motion, motivational sayings. So we've got Let passion be your motivation. Be afraid and do it anyway and believe in yourself so this is a set of um, six little patterns that i'm going to be putting in groups of three to sell so there's three there and the cool thing is this is one of jenny's needle minders see believe in yourself and so each set when you buy it as a kid will come with one of jenny's needle minders and the other set has the cultivate yourself as well so look for them coming soon on the Paddock Lanes Designs Etsy store. Available as PDF patterns and kits soon. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Four finishes in this time. It's been a pretty good week. I can tell Knock It Over is going to be a brilliant time. In last week, I did 5,848 stitches. I did approximately 1,400 the week before since I filmed and so far this week, which I haven't been able to get as much as I'd want to, I've done approximately 1,500 stitches. So there's a lot of stitches gone into them, but I'm enjoying getting back to the more monogamous style of stitching. Um, so that's really cool. Okay, with my designing. I have a few few um, plans in the works and one of the plans whole evening the other night sorting out my silks for you I think it would be really cool to design something that features these fantastic threads they're a great Australian company 
They have really good quality products, lovely colors. I don't have nearly the whole set, but I wanted to see how I was tracking and see if I had enough colors to start to design with. And I'm pretty sure I do. So I'm really looking forward to starting to design something with them. And I just got to decide what, what is it that I wanted to design with? Now, when I showed this picture of, of my designing um, collection, lots of people were interested. This is a tie rack. See how it's got the little, it's a co-hanger for ties. It's got 24 little spokes on it. And I like it because they don't really slip off when you have it flat. So that's a good way. And I onto each one of them, getting close up and personal today, I've made a floss ring with mini playing cards as my floss drops. And so I have 10 floss drops on each ring. And then I have the skein of beautiful silk floss just hanging down from it. So that is what I am doing to store my threads. And I find that works for me really well. So yes, I'm thinking about a series using the silks, um, maybe an alphabet series of some small projects because I do so many big projects. I, I like doing some smalls. And those little sayings were tiny, um, so maybe a bit bigger than them, but yeah, I'm thinking about a way of maybe incorporating some of the fancy um, stitch I've been learning in my alphabet sampler with, with an Australian sort of themed alphabet. So we'll see, see what comes out of my head. Anything's possible. All right, haul. I have got haul. I have lots of haul. So first of all, we have got my Silks For You Colour of the Month, or Silk of the Month. This is the ones that are the normal colours that are going to go onto that stand. I should say that's my Silks For You regular colours. It's a bit of a red, white and blue sort of pack happening here. Four of the regular colours. So they are going to get sorted and put onto those tags. I also bought some threads from JK's. Now, for anyone in Australia and New Zealand, JK's cross-stitching is quite well known. She's an online, an online shop who likes to try and provide things for people so that they can enjoy their hobby at an affordable price. So she doesn't have high markups on anything and she has just launched a new product, which I'm just trying to get ready for you, which is hand-dyed threads. So I bought the ones that she had available on the site. Um, each one of her skeins is $3.50. Smaller skeins than the silks for you. But you can see there's lots of really nice colours there. So I'm looking forward to, to doing some dyeing with that. It's just DMC that's dyed. So if you're interested in some hand dyed threads, um, I thoroughly recommend checking out JK's home brand. Really, really, really cool. Also, she had something in clearance. I can't remember if I showed you this the other day, a Riolas kit with a cute kitty cat and a sewing machine. I just thought, yes, I have to do that. I won't be doing I won't be doing it on the on the Ada. Looking at the back though, I think I need to get that one too. I got my next lot of fabric in to dye and with it a nice big cutting ruler. Very exciting stash. But then I also got some project bags. My friend Sue's sister started making these and they are simply gorgeous. They're really nice size and I've got a, this is an 8x8, eight eight. excuse that. So you can see that you can fit an 8x8 eight eight in there with plenty of room. So really, really good size. So I got these from her, beautiful mermaid one. And if you're interested, let me know and I can probably pass on her and we'll get her to contact you. Um, some sea creatures with a lovely pink wavy background. Which are my favourite colours, the teal and the fuchsia. I've got beautiful bikes, French, and on the back it's got a whole bunch of words. Got some lovely orange dragonflies and a tiny one which wouldn't fit the 
eight by eight to, to keep it in there, but that's the size of it with beautiful love hearts. So I'm all ready to start getting kitted up for, for next year. So what are my plans? Well, for this week, my plans are to move in to knock it over early. I mean, October starts on Thursday or Friday this week. Um, so I'm going to start get started on knocking those pieces off. Everyone thinks I'm crazy for having 18 pieces that I want to knock it off. But I think I can do it if I put my mind to it. I do have to do my zombie run in there as well sometime in the month. Um, but apart from that, we'll see what happens, see where it goes. So, yes, I've got all those plans. Now, thank you, everyone, for your input from last week. Really appreciated it. And it looks like for next year, I will be basically going with what I thought. All the knock it overs, definitely doing them. The Biscorner was popular. Um, everyone thought I should knock over my snow angel. So I'll get that done. Motivation, get it done. But for next year, it seemed that people wanted me to keep my Disney one in. So my Disney one will come in. And that just means that I need to finish another one, which I think will be Strawberry Field. So it's good. Plus now I've already done the model stitch and numbers. So that's two down already out of the 18. I know that the model stitch was three little ones, but they I tissue box them. So where, when I finished one, I put the next one in, started that, pulled that. And I love that idea. Our friend Debbie um, coined that idea and we love it. You know, new starts. So yes, I tissue box them. I also then don't know which ones I'm going to work on. I know I need to do a bit of work on my stitch in time uh, later in this week. I'm going to just wait till it's the end of the month so that I can use it to the zombie run for next month and then get ready for next year. So it's very, very exciting. So if you are interested in knocking down your whips and you want to narrow things down, then please check out No New Starts, but make sure you answer the questions because if you don't answer the questions, you don't get in. And I know there's a few people who've applied to get in who haven't answered the questions and have been declined. They might be wondering why. So please answer the questions and then we'll get you in. All right. I think that's basically me for the week. Um, I, my personal life, just to finish with, I had a, um, a foot operation yesterday, which is I've had an ongoing problem with my foot. So I had an operation and I didn't come out of the anesthetic very well. So I'm not really up to lifting heavy instruments to play the fanfare. I'm not up to walking around much. And at least I'm up to sitting and stitching and filming. So that's part of why it's a bit late. So I'm sorry about that. The other thing, can't forget. I'm teaching you guys Australian. My Australian word of the week is press stud. Now I don't have any press studs to show you. But press studs are little metal circles with a pointy bit that you clip together to hold things in place. You sew them onto both sides of the fabric and clip them together. And we call them press studs. I believe in America they're called snaps. So a snap is that, also known as a click. But if you snap to it, you're clicking to it, you're moving fast. Um, that's what a snap is in Australia. A press stud is little metal thing that joins the fabric together. All right, that is your American lesson of the week or your Australian lesson of the week for the American friends and the Europeans as well, if you're interested. Um, so thank you for joining me. I really hope you have a good week stitching. I'm going to be back with the monthly video in a couple of days. Lots of things happening as always, but get ready to knock it over guys. Get rid of those whips. Bye. <laughs>